and welcome to DM's Book Club, the podcast where we read about some Dungeons and Dragons, uh, maybe barely research it, I don't know, um, <laughs> <laughs> discuss how we put it into our role-playing campaigns. <laughs> don't worry, folks, that will mean nothing to anyone. It's just me and Hamilton. I am, you, I'm alright. I'm, I'm definitely ready to go after that. <laughs> perfect. Good. Perfect. Good. Um, I'm good. Yeah. Yes, I'm good. I am I'm not off the back of any curse of Strahd. I am um, No. No. Uh I am deep in the prep for Dragon's Jewel season three and <gasps> solo parenting for two days, as I said, so knackered is knackered. the word. Yeah. You are the busiest man in Twitch. I I just assume that I was like, what's Hamilton doing? And then I'll be like, I'll check the Discord. No, the and like, crazy Whoa. thing is their people are busier. That's the joke. Like they're actually like I'm not even at the level of some people. It is insane. I don't have enough. I don't know where they get the time, but yeah. Oh. Yes, and as as folks may see, that I'm not in my usual uh, room. I am in a closet <laughs> in the US. Um, I'm currently visiting my partner in the US, and whilst uh, he's bought a new house and it's very very lovely, it is incredibly echoey. But now they have these things called walk-in closets, and let me tell you, Hamilton, mm-hmm. it's very nice. Yes. <laughs> a, I mean, yeah. the, the house itself is very nice, but it's also like. God damn it! Just because our UK houses they're lovely, but there's so it's a different world over here. Well, yeah, your they're, room they're small... is the same as this room, which is like a yeah. normal bedroom, whilst yours is a secondary room. <laughs> yeah, this is this is just like oh, we'll just put clothes in here, but we'll never use it for anything else. You're yeah, like, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> We've so I designed right. walk-in closets in houses in some of the architecture, and they are literally basically a wardrobe times two and that's like we yeah. call that luxury all that luxury yeah, I, that could, is. <laughs> I could i can literally get up and walk around yeah. and peruse maybe oh i'll have that shirt from all the way over there and it's that that's the thing is like i've ne- I, it is I, kn- I know as a british person in, Amer- in america like, this is like first world problems as well but it's like oh it's very overwhelming <laughs> <laughs> oh there's so much to do um but yes that's where i am but speaking of um D and D stuff i actually uh, we had our regular Monday game last night, uh, thanks to the wonders of online technology, and we faced our very first dragon <gasps> in a game. Yeah. Yes, it's the the whole Dungeons and Dragons thing. Like I think you said, it's a lot of dungeons, not much dragons. Yeah. Finally faced one, Yay. and it was very scary. <laughs> <laughs> what was your level, and I, what was the dragon? So we were level seventeen, and we were facing a dragon that's not in the current. Uh, Monster Manual, or even in what we're going to discuss today in Fizzbands, mm-hmm. it is a wind dragon. I think it's from one of the bestiaries from okay. like Wolfgang. Uh, I can't remember his last name, unfortunately. But um, well, they I can do think like of is other sort of punk. Who's the? Is that the the? the... Chef? I think so. Oh no, I don't know. I, there you go. L- lack of research. Um, but it's uh, like a codex thing uh, that they do, and they, uh, it's like a five E stuff. So, so we gave that to our DM right at the beginning of the campaign, and now he's using it quite a bit. Because yeah. not that we know every every monster, but mm. it's quite nice to see all these different types. But cool. yes, we've got we're up against like an elemental dragon. Which I will tell you before we go into this thing, it was it was very funny because obviously we're at the beginning of this thing. We're like, we know we're going to face it, and I was like. Should we just maybe check? Should we talk to it first? They go, no, no, we're going to go and kill it. And I was like, I mean, just saying, like, dragons are very smart and it knows we're coming. So running in might not work. No, 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 it's fine. And of course, it's like on a ledge, really high up. It's going to do a monologue. And I was like, this is the perfect time to do a dist- distraction, right? And then obviously we were just like, uh, and I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> too late it. now. This is literally probably what happens yeah. in real life, not obviously with dragons, <laughs> but when people face what? some sort of yeah. thing, is just like, should we be doing this? I don't know. He's still monologuing. Oh fuck, he's now burning us. <laughs> it's so yeah. crap. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But well, today, Hamilton. Well, what are we doing today? Is just sort of a sneaky peek there. But yeah. what are we doing? We are creating our own dragon. Yes, <laughs> yes. We're going back into fizz bands finally, like yeah. after our, our brief sort of impressions, we're mm. like, oh, it's very good. And now we're looking into actually creating all the, well, having a look at at least one dragon type and yeah. looking through and see what we can do. Exactly. So, It'll be fun. Very exciting. Yeah. And we've, I mean, as we said before on Dia's book, we have done an episode on the chromatics versus the palette and stuff. And mm. the reason sort of I mentioned that story about uh, playing uh, against a dragon last night is because mm. I'm very aware, and I know, Hamilton, you are very aware, that dragons are very smart, ancient beings. Mm. Like, you don't take them down easily. They they take towns down before the adventurers come. Yeah. So that's why I... And obviously, Fizzbands has this huge section on how to roleplay dragons. That like, gives this whole lore of stuff, which is amazing. Mm. That's sort of like... 
you know, it's not just here's the monster, uh, you hit at it, points go down, etc. That there's a whole like with all these sort of legendary creatures and stuff, and having the big bad at the end of a campaign, that you know, have a little bit of thought into creating this dragon because it's going to be a lasting impression on you guys. Because you know, it is a dragon, mm. Dungeons and Dragons, that sort of thing. You know, you want to make sure you leave a lasting impression rather than like, here it is. Like it's gonna, you're gonna probably have to talk. You're probably gonna have to do some conniving sort of things and just like, you know, use all the things, learn the legendary actions, all that yeah, sort of thing. Exactly. So. You can't. I, I feel it's one of those things you have to prepare for. Oh, seriously! Yeah, like, and out. if you don't, it, yeah, and like, remembering, as you said, not even legendary actions, layer actions as well, and layer actions, of course. And you've really got to be on your game in terms of tactically because they they are. You can get really outdone. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. I got oh, outdone one in basically one turn where someone force caged me. Oh, force cage is an amazing spell. Yeah, and I was uh, like, yeah. fuck, I'm like stuck in a force cage. There's nothing I can do as a dragon. Like, that was it. Yeah. I was just like, oh, okay, right. So, <laughs> um, all right. Because I, I failed the saving throw and that was literally it. It was one roll and done because there was, mm. there was nothing. Unless someone can tell me there's a way out of it, because I couldn't find a way out of it. I guess I guess it depends if you had legendary resistances where you can succeed a saving throw. Oh yeah, but that, they weren't. But I, they weren't that legendary. But yeah, yet. they weren't. Yeah, that's the thing. Only certain drag, well, certain levels of dragons. Obviously, you yes. got like wormlings. Sorry, this wasn't like an ancient dragon. This was just a young. No, dragon. no, that's, but still. It yeah, was still... so yeah, yeah, young, yeah, young and adult dragons. Yeah. I believe they don't have it. Uh, yeah. We'll double check, obviously. But mm. yeah, so it, that's the only thing I say is that. Yeah, I always think when you're putting a legendary creature in, double check there is a resistance thing. Because I, I just write that at the top of your sheet, because like that will come in handy. Because all, all of your adventurers are going to be putting out like the really big spells, and you're like, hmm, I say if it doesn't matter, like, and because obviously they know, players mm. will know if they've planned it properly that, like, okay, most legendary creatures will have three legendary resistances per day, so mm. we need to get that eaten up in some way. Yeah, and, no, and, it was a young dragon, then young dragons don't. It's only adult dragons exactly. that do, but I just want to double check oh, that. Yeah, that I mean, it's but, still only. Fair I know it's only that a young that's dragon, a... but it was a great move. <laughs> was like... Yeah, well, fair cop to that player. Like that, Force Cage is a great spell. I've yeah. I've been on the receiving end of that myself, mm. and I'm like, well, there's nothing I can do about it. But it was great, and I have, yeah. I think that's such it's such a great spell. But obviously, if they save, then that's mm. gone. But that's not what we're, talk, what we're talking about no, today. Sorry. So we're going to look at no, no, no. I, I, but I think it's interesting, like because. Again, it's, a, it's an iconic creature that we want to make sure, as a DM, that we get it right. Yeah. Uh, in a sense, like it, it has a great impact on the game. It's not just, oh, here's another thing for you to fight because you've gone up the levels. Mm. So, looking at fizz bands, so they have this thing at the end called the Dracon. Oh, I'm not going to say this right, am I? Uh, the Draconomicon. Draconomicon. Right? There you go. <laughs> Draconomicon. They have their own bestiary at the sounds end. Like the new, is... <laughs> the new, um, <laughs> sounds a little bit like the new COVID, <laughs> doesn't it? Omicron. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that will make the world a little bit better if we, if we realise that. <laughs> ah, the new strain is all about dragons. Yeah, oh, you're all going to turn into dragons. That. <laughs> oh, that, that would be, I, I say that would be amazing. That would be awful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, there's all these dragons that they appear. Yeah. But, yes, so they've got a whole section at the end with the new... Uh, dragons as well so we f i thought we'd go through and pick mm. one that appeals to you hamilton and then we can sort of uh look at the stats of that particular dragon but mm. also there's a bit um a section where we can create the ideals personality mm. bonds and flaws and come up with an actual personality because like i said most dragons are certainly well they will have their own personality that's the thing i think mm. it sets them apart from most other just normal monsters is that they've lived such an experienced life you know they have create created hordes there are always people coming to fight them in some way mm. so they'll have certain wants certain needs uh, certain aspirations and probably certain weaknesses as well mm. it's individual to those dragons yeah. so it's nice to have like these whole sort of um uh i guess uh, not stereotypes that's not what i'm thinking of but sort of a whole sort of types of dragons so you've got your chromatics mm. metallics and gem but then to drill down and go oh, here's a subset and here's what typologies what's i think is the right word. Yeah, yeah and also it allows you to have like cause not all dragons live together obviously mm. quite a few of them actually live in isolation because they all hate each other which is great but like maybe there's a reason why this dragon isn't a part of uh is different to the rest of the sort yeah. of red dragons for example so mm. yeah. yeah no and i think that's the thing and it's like um uh, what you were saying about them having like uh, a flaw it kind of reminds me a bit like when we were talking about our villains the other day like a, a great villain oh. always has to have that 
that little like their kryptonite you know if you want a better term yeah. that is that is something that you can manipulate or use and i mm. mentioned we did fizz bands the the one in <clears throat> that uh, that uh, Drizzit uh, overcomes by using their vanity and sort of pretending to be he pretends to be yeah. another dragon in human form and sort cool. of like boasting to them that they're better than they are and stuff like that and like getting yeah. under their skin and then yeah instead of actually fighting them which is quite well done so yeah well actually thinking about it that the the process we went through to create a villain mm. works incredibly well mm. You just have to at the end go, okay, which dragon type? Yeah, is it? exactly. You know, like yeah. So that that's the thing. You don't like, and I've said it before in that mm. episode is that when you're thinking of like, okay, it's a monstrous big bad mm. or villain, take away the monstrous at the beginning and work on those human elements, those, the yeah. ones that you can relate to as a character, and then put on the monster afterwards. Because I think that's just yeah. much easier as a as a thing. So yeah, absolutely, very good point actually. Mm. That idea that you know wants needs and stuff like that, but it's also a massive fuck off dragon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's still there's a, the the skin you need to get under is pretty scary. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah, well, exactly. And, and I mean, you could also do that for NPCs as well. It's yeah. like they're they're a big fuck off dragon, but they're actually really nice. Yeah, and oh, they've been guarding the local town, but obviously people don't go near because it's like it's a fucking dragon. Yeah, you know. So now and now I'm just thinking like a, a Grinch type dragon. I mean, most dragons are Grinchy around their hordes, but now I'm just like. Oh, Christmas dragon. Okay, yes. enough. Christmas dragon. Back in the box. Okay, back in the closet. <laughs> right. So, okay. there are 20 types in fizz bands of, di- of different ones. So we've got the new ones, we've got metallics, okay. the chrom- chromatics, and things. So I'm looking at, I mean, obviously, we're looking at the NVIDIA round. I'm not sure what page it's on, but Hamilton, we've got 20 types. Yes. So do you want to roll a d20 for me and see? Roll a d20. We Here we go. Whoa, I just dropped it. <laughs> and I oh, no. I was trying to do, like, some, <laughs> some flair. I rolled a natural one. (laughs) Well, that is great, because that is an amethyst dragon. It is. Hey, there we go. I clicked on it, and people can see it. There you go. All good. All good. So uh, I don't know much about amethyst dragons, obviously, other than they're gem dragons. Um, But I like that sort of quote at the top. Mm. Uh, I once sought life advice from an amethyst dragon who specialised in that sort of thing. I told her all my flaws and unwanted behaviours and she described the best elixir. Stop doing those things. (laughs) I still think back on that visit in trying times. I like it. This seems very straightforward, per se. Um, But yes, so looking at... And I assume this happens for each of the uh, entries. We've Mm. got uh, personality traits, ideals... Mm. Uh, oh, adventure hooks. Yeah. Uh, oh, we've got a whole lot of things there. So there you go. I've not okay. clearly not looked at this. <laughs> Whoops. Um, oh, but I see now that they've got the different dragon types as well. So you can yeah. have connections, essentially. Yeah. That's really good. Great. And layers. Wow, there's a lot to go through. All right, there let's start at the top. Then. <laughs> yeah, let's cool. Okay. Uh, so we've got personality traits. Go on, then. Give, can you, mm. Have you got some dice? I do have some dice. Sweet. We've been... Like it, like as if I was back in London, I'm always like eight feet away from a dice set <laughs> of some sort. Um, cool. So yes. Yeah, so Do they just orbit phrase. you? Is that what you're saying? Can you just have like an I orbit of dice? I just pull of, out of, of the dice? air. Absolutely. Just take that one. So, how do you want to do personality traits? Because I am aware when you create a character, you can pick two. Yeah. Do we just want to roll one, or do you want to? Do you think we should do one each. Oh, let's do one each. Let's do that then. Let's get okay. Let's get. So, okay, you so go this first. Is a, this is a D8. Okay. So a D8 on this table. Oh, you know what? It's too dark in here to see it. Uh, that is a four. Although some are fascinated uh, by words, I think numbers are the true foundations of creation. Ooh, Bit of a math yeah. nerd. <laughs> so. mm, yeah, no, it feels very much like, oh, now I can't remember which uh, college it is. Quantra- Contrix in Strixhaven? Oh, I don't know. Something? I have not actually had a look at that yet, unfortunately. Fair enough, fair enough, yeah. I think Contrix is all mathematical. Mm. All, I, I see them as all Excel spreadsheets yes. kind of people, but yes. Okay, yeah. okay that sounds like We've got an one. accountant. Um, <laughs> so basically we've got an accountant, oh, Dragon. Of course. With the little course, visor. The little visor. Yes. yes. Amethyst Dragon with an accountant. Okay, I'll roll D D8. Let's see what right. I get. Go for it. See what else we get. A two. What we got? I am a sworn protector against the debrications of the far realm and will root out its corruptions where wherever it may rise. Oh, cool. So I'm a good dragon fighting for fighting to root out corruption. And I'm an accountant. Awesome. <laughs> Love numbers. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's great. I like, that's a, yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, because that, that's I think cause that's quite cool. Because obviously now you have like here is their job or here is their sort of motive per se. Mm. In a way, I know we'll mm. go into ideals in a second, but also I like numbers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what kind of numbers? Any numbers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, 
Because that, cause that, cause that'd be quite funny. Because it does say some are fascinated by my words. Yeah. So obviously it's someone who is very eloquent. So it's not like the social anxiety, like yeah. oh, I bank numbers sort of thing. But I, I quite like that. It's, but it could be really eloquent, almost like a Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. style. But also just throw in lots of different numbers yeah, like 2,932 like or something like that like <laughs> really ele- like 47. really uh, elongated yeah <laughs> what? Uh, 47 sir nothing <laughs> it's just so oh you know what it could be actually thinking about it again more of like a mannerism hmm. is that sort of thing where you go what do you think of the number 31 isn't it delicious mm. 31 and just roll that around like as a yeah. sort of your mannerisms that you just throw out random words and mm. say what do you think like you know how people see color uh, mm. around certain words and stuff it could be the same sort of thing about numbers i like that uh, i actually I like know someone <laughs> on the internet's uh, dm yeti who has made a draconic um numbering system uh, like symbols <gasps> it's really cool i will try oh. and share a link to it now Please. Because it's um he uses it's it like is. a circular disc and it's twelve yeah. di- it's twelve but it uses three digit claws so it's basically as if he's really thought oh. about it like they would scroll a circle with their with their claws and then they would do sc- mm-hmm. scratches like one two three and then they would turn one two three and they would all make like a numbering system particularly for dragons that's so how cool that's is that so bloody cool it's really cool Very, I'll I like... show some pictures as well hopefully at the moment but yeah yeah. That's so cool. I love I love stuff like that. Like I know they've done obviously with infernal language and stuff that they've given those sort of guides for for DMs to create stuff. That's really cool actually. Yeah. Oh, I'd love handouts like that. Yeah. It's a little bit more. It feels real, doesn't it? It really does. It, and this, for this sort of dragon, that'd be perfect. Like to like have these numbers and use that as like a slicker like that could be part of your trips and tra- your tricks and traps. You know, sort of thing. Like as you're getting to the layer, there's lots of these little number sequences you've got to figure out. Oh my out. god, there is. A, it's like a, a math quiz. Yes. To get through this door, what is these yeah. numbers, oh my god, yeah, that'd be amazing. Like, wait, are we just okay. doing? Are we just doing a test? Yes, yes. But it's one of it's them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amazing. I love it. Again, we've already created it. Like this, this dragon in my head is so vivid. Yeah, now, and that's just from two rolls. So that's incredible. This is the magic. All right, magic. on to ideals. Ideals. Okay. So this is quite. This is quite good. So this obviously gives that alignment thing mm. what we're saying about so obviously alignment is very different now but mm. we can we can see what it comes from there so if you cool. want to roll a d6 oh it's me, your turn now what we get. it's your turn oh it's me yeah Ooh. i just rolled okay yeah all right that is uh, a three on the die Ooh, self-improvement i am a complex gem i constantly and i constantly polish and refine my many facets to make the whole that more much more perfect Ooh. okay so that's sort of, quite cool. I, yeah. I like that. Yeah, that's really nice. Like, and, uh, go on. No, no, go for it. I was thinking, like, well, <clears throat> their whole point is that they want to, like, root out corruption. So I can see them as slightly, like, self-deprecating, uh, self-improvement, slightly self-deprecating about the ability that they're able to do, you know, like, to uncover corruption. But they're always, mm-hmm. like, constantly, like, trying to, you know, trying to push themselves further. I'm seeing this, like, mm. very super superhero-y sort of um, character in my mind as well sort of yeah definitely and i think maybe and yeah they also see themselves yeah they're not perfect in a way Mm. they want to be perfect so Mm. they they're aware of their own uh shortcomings and Mm. stuff but maybe they don't show it as well like i always think like obviously i know like um it's diamonds that are like the hardest material on earth and stuff like that so that sort of idea that they are this hard exterior perhaps Mm. is sort of like um obviously they're they're not showing their weakness per se, and it's yeah. very hard to crush that as a way. So yeah, I, I really like that. It's such mm. a, a great, what a great line as well. Like I am a complex gem. Yes. Maybe I should put that in my bios. Like, I am a complex, complex gem. <laughs> I am so sparkly, but I am so complex. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> you have to do that all the time, and you're just talking. Oh. <laughs> um, oh so, right. so yeah, and also maybe just reading some math books before going to bed, just to keep keep up on the latest. Oh, keep. <laughs> They'll be on Big Brain Academy yeah. on the uh, on the twi- on the Switch. Yeah. Uh, just like <laughs> yes, all the God. Sudoku's on it. Oh my God! Yeah. Sudoku, you, Sudoku. They, their, their Dragon Horde Sudoku. is just full of cryptic crosswords. Yes. Sudoku's the like horde. that, and then abacuses. Is golden the, abacuses. Yeah, just everywhere. And then they turn around and go, "What have you brought?" And you're like, "The latest edition of Puzzle." And they go, <laughs> <gasps> "Give me, give me, give me!" <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's perfect. I, what a character. I'm just, oh, I'm loving this. All right, all right, moving on. Uh, we've got uh, Dragon Adventure, Adventure Hunts. Fantastic. So we've got... Oh, <laughs> Get me the latest edition of Puzzler. It's going to be... Oh, I know. I, I'm already I'm already keen on that. But we've got yes, yeah, suggestions for stories and adventures okay. involving and, and, 
amethyst dragons. Oh, I don't know what that is. I think that is a one. Another so one. So you rolled a d8. Uh, yeah, a one. A one. Ah, uh, an amethyst <clears throat> dragon seeks a rare type of crystal found in the domain of a, te- uh, a territorial stone giant clan. Mm. Now, this is interesting because um, I'm sure you know this, Hamilton, but uh, dragons and giants have this very uh, tense mm. relationship uh, as uh, from the old world, that sort of idea that they hate each other and now neither of them really exist anymore or they're really reduced in number. So that yeah. could be quite fun as well. And maybe, again, once you've created the, uh, this dragon and then you're like, okay, so now we have a giant clan coming up with <laughs> who the leader is of that clan and doing the same thing as before with that sort of yeah. NPC slash villain archetype and then going okay and then a stone giant t- stats at the end so that'll be quite good and then what else have we got here we've got ones that are mm. like covens of hags we love a good hag <laughs> i love a good hag um oh an amethyst mm. dragon recruits a group of adventurers to uh psychic um i can't even say that psychically 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 yeah Ugh, words <laughs> trade bodies with adventurers from another world so they can carry out certain tasks before swapping them back whoa well, that's a quite a tricky one i like that's kind of that's gonna be yeah, difficult that, to play but I, I, it could be really interesting that i mean that could be good i guess if you were doing like a west march campaign and you had you know different groups of people that are playing separately and then you're able to play other people's weirdly characters. i feel this is yeah. gonna fit in with dragon's <laughs> juice Whoops. Season three. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't even realise this is what they've written. But um, because we've got that's two fun. planes of existence, we've got two parties, and they're mm-hmm. playing two. They're going to be the same characters, but playing two halves of the same psyche. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. So like they're the same characters, but they've been split in half for reasons, and oh. so the two teams are playing the same people. But as I said, yeah, two halves of the same psyche, which is going to be that's fun. So cool. And there's going to be you... some gem dragoning, probably. <laughs> Nice. No, that's good. I, I think I just find that's quite interesting. That whole sort of like yeah, trading bodies stuff. I guess with this, obviously, it's with adventurers from another yeah. world. So if you were doing this as a one shot or in your regular campaign, yeah. it feels like there might be, I don't know, a lot of work on the DM to come up with all these other yeah. character sheets. And which, which, if people want to do that, it's fine. I think for me, I like the idea that you you physically could change with someone else at the table. Yeah. So whether it's like body swapping with other people, like body swap episodes are fun mm. anyway because people get yeah. to try out new things, but. I think just, yeah, with this, this makes sense when you have two groups yeah. and you can swap them through, maybe, I don't know, Adventurous League stuff. I they did. won't allow that. But, yeah. In a uh, one shot I played, I might have mentioned this before, but I had the thing, I talked about it when in my villain who gave people drinks and uh, it made them do all like lyrical things. Well, one of them is I literally just turned someone into a bard. So I just handed someone a new character sheet in the middle of a one shot, just like, because they'd come with their character and I went, so you're now a bard? And went, bosh, there you go. <laughs> and they were like, oh, <laughs> what? I am so not prepared. <laughs> nope. No, you're not. <laughs> there you go. And they were like playing a fighter, so it was even more perfect because they're like, I've that's never done spell so casting. Cool. I don't know what I'm doing. And it was just like, it's a one shot. Enjoy I, it. <laughs> I, I love that sort of surprise. I, I want more. Again, it's a lot of work on DMs to come up with that stuff. Yeah. But if you're doing that, I as a player, yeah. I love that sort of thing because I, lo- I love rising to the cha- challenge. I love yeah. being surprised like that. No, that's, they really took so it on fun. as well. And they then started like properly getting involved. And yeah, we were. this was in the days when you could play in person at a pub. So it got better as the oh. night got on, let's say, because the more oh. drinks that got in the more they embraced their inner bard it was perfect oh that's amazing oh that's yeah. so cool i love that i love that miss those and days I can just, <laughs> I can just, oh, soon fingers crossed yes. she says yeah. um but like I, I do like that last entry on that table an amethyst dragon is infusing their with their echoes across the worlds mm. so they had this idea earlier in fizzbans that the same dragon exists on various different planes and stuff but they could be wildly different mm. they all hope to ascend to godhood perhaps recreating or replacing Sard- sardior Ooh. um who's obviously the the head dragon um of the gem dragons yeah. uh, i think um but again this feels very much like um again all this marvel stuff going out the multiverse um I, have you seen the end of Loki? Yes, of course I have. That's why I've written Dragon Steel season three. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> cool, cool. But yes, so again, if if you haven't watched Loki, uh, go watch Loki very quickly. Hundred percent. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, it's a, again the whole that whole setting is just great as well. We won't go yeah. into. It, I'm sure we'll do a whole thing later on. We'll go. Do you see this TV show? It was really good and could be great in your D and D setting. Yeah, I'm no, sure we'll do actually, that we should. Point. So why don't we do that? Let's say that we do that. We get some TV shows yeah. and say why don't bring this into the setting. Well, I, I, well, again, I know we're recording this way in advance, but I don't know when Christmas is for for DM's book club. But maybe we could do that as a Christmas episode. Yes. Per se. Okay. Uh, connected creatures. Okay. Yeah. So it says here, amethyst dragons are generally aloof. 
uh, dwelling in isolation for long periods of time and rel- la, 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 la. rarely cultivate. <laughs> just, just, oh, so pretty. I love my numbers. Um, cultivating, rarely cultivating connections with other creatures, but when they do connect, it's more often for intellectual and philosophical pursuits or to fulfill some arcane purpose involving dragons' echoes across the world. So that's quite a, a nice little thing. So like, hey, why are they... Why is there only one on their own? But why mm. is there two? Or why yeah. why have they connected with each other? Yeah. So I guess looking at it, so obviously it splits up into uh, wormling, young, adult, and ancient. Mm. Do you want to roll a d4 for me? Okay, and, we'll choose and then which we can is. we can choose which what kind of dragon this amethyst dragon we're creating is. Where's my d4? I can't find my d4. Where is it? Yeah. D4. There we go. Right. Ah, it's a one. A lot of ones today. Oh, yeah. I'm rolling a, a lot of ones. Today. So that is a wormling. Yeah, so so these are the sort of the, these sort of little baby dragons. That they're they're for sort of level one ones to four, which is quite good. Mm-hmm. Again, if we're just starting out, if you really were like, I can't wait for them to get the high levels. I want to have dragons now. It's like yeah, put a wormling in. So that'd be quite good. All right. So on the wormling table, I get to roll a d six and see what the connection is. Uh, it's a three. So a violet fairy dragon is the playmate and guardian of an amethyst dragon wormling. Ooh, well, instantly that means we can create another one at some point. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, fairy dragon. I, like I didn't. That. See, yeah, I can't remember. Oh yes, I'm just looking at these now. Yeah, they're beautiful fairy dragons on this. But that's quite good because then, because also we've created a very sort of like uh, aloof, mm. uh, hard exterior amethyst dragon that likes numbers. So instantly it means that if we have an opposite or a sort of um, mm. another half to it. It could be more playful, could be more sort of like, yeah. like um, uh, I was going to, oh, what was I going to say? Well, maybe Almost this like is, maybe when, what we're creating then, maybe we, that's their connection as a child. Why don't we make it, why don't we give them a connection at each level and make Ooh, them ancient? Nice. So this is like their that, backstory. Yeah. You know what? That's so, ah, that's really clever actually. Cause then it means that you have other ways to con- either to get to this dragon or they yeah. have other friends of you. Sending them off on missions. So Great. This, so so have... this was like the maybe that fairy violet fairy dragon was their like as a guardian of them and taught them like you know le- and they were like clearly like a prodigy sort of mm. wormling with this mu- with this mathematics. So they went off. They got sent off mm-hmm. to like math school. <laughs> I don't know, but like this got this all this yeah. guardian just like helped just embody them with this this uh, with a whimsy maybe because they're sort of a fairy dragon. So maybe that gave them yeah. something of that softer sense to them on that. top of their sort of ruthless mathematical mind or something okay so i uh, think that's yeah perfect yeah. all right cool so do you want to roll for the young amethyst okay, okay let's do that one rolled for that. yeah yeah, yeah that, hey we're all here we're all here for rolling on tables exactly so that's what the wizards wants us to do so we'll do <laughs> clearly uh four 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 so a deep pool in a young amethyst dragon's lair leads to an underground domain of an aboleth the dragon has been seeking to eliminate. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Like oh, like that. Like that. no, not an aboleth. Oh, they're so scary. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'll just click on oh. what an aboleth looks like for everyone at home. Oh, no. Oh, no. We, we've discussed them quite a bit. I think we discussed them in uh, the Baldur's Gate yes. episode we did with Boo and Minsk. Mm. Oh, I can never say Minsk, Minsk. and Boo. Minsk. Minsk yeah. and Boo. It will never get any better. Think and of the city. in our <laughs> Halloween episode. Yes, yeah. he did. Yeah. Just, one day, I'll I'll just be pay, I'll pay somebody to give me a pronunciation lesson on all yeah. these all these names, but it's not today. Um, did you know? But in the, oh great! Oh yeah, in the uh, Dragon Heist um, uh, game, the Water Deep Dragon Heist, the Stone yep. of Galore is the head of an aboleth only, but it's just like the eyes of it. And it thinks, and it's got like a really, it's a really fun, like, it, it, whenever you, if you play it, it's got like a fun little, like, a role play, because it says, it thinks it's an ancient elder god, it isn't, but it thinks it is, sort of things. So you have to play oh, it like it's this ancient, all-knowing what? being, but all it really knows is where one thing is. So it, like, acts wow. like it knows everything, and when you ask it a question that's, like, beyond its recollection, it goes, hmm... Yes, uh, you know that's how I play. It. Like, <laughs> yes, an intriguing question I will ponder, but really has no idea. Something, oh, but it's quite. What fun. what a great role playing thing as well. Yeah. Like again, just if you look at a stat block and go, okay, what's one thing on it? It's it feels very much like a Jim Henson type thing, yeah. where like um the the sleeping uh, uh older older man with the the bird on his head, that sort of thing was like, you know, and then it's just like gives one word of wisdom and then falls asleep. And you're like, 
that's it. And you're like, yeah, that, that's all you get. Yeah. Pay, pay as you leave. You know, oh, I love that. Again, that little lines of just like, here's a role play. And you can just have fun for yeah. hours as a DM like that. Because mm. it means you don't have to roll anything. You can just be like, this is what's happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can just pretend. And you don't have to know anything, which is always very useful as a DM. Oh. <laughs> so. it's, it's that sort of thing about you've got imposter syndrome, but you just have to be so confident to just... Get over it. You yeah, exactly. Don't worry about it. And, 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 and the thing is, though, the players will know that but they won't be able to do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is always a great feeling. Can't do that in real life, unfortunately, because they'll call you out. You can you definitely out. try. <laughs> you can definitely try, as they always say. Exactly. All right, so yeah. on to an adult amethyst. So this is okay. for me. This is a D8, Ooh, D8 on this though. one. The last two were D6, so I guess there's, there's more <clears> stuff to do <throat> when you're an adult. When you're know. an adult, yeah. You can go out uh, drinking. But... Oh, oh, that'd be... <laughs> uh, an amethyst dragon's night out on the town. It's like, okay, show, show me what... What is fun? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate this is a big stereotype of, of mathematical nerds. Yeah, like that. yeah but so it's going to be turned into its human form. It's going to be a bit well, like that it. scene in... Uh, uh, I've been watching, what's it called? Uh, what we do in the shadows when they go drinking with the lich sort of character, <gasps> with, the ancient one. With the, yeah, with the sort of the big... the Yeah, the... the um, I can't remember what the it's called. Yeah, but the, the master, at, the baron. Yeah. The baron. A night on the town. A night on the town. Baron's such a great character because yeah. they're like, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> oh god, he could kill us at any moment. Yeah, exactly. Yet... Be well, that, that would be an amazing thing. Like, yeah. he was, I want to. Sh what What is it like to be an adventurer? And but the adventurers are always on their toes because they're like, it's a bloody dragon yeah, with us. Like... <laughs> yeah, just starts. Imagine, dragon, has, has a whiskey. A dragon... <laughs> you get out of the, you know, like because it's like fire breath. You're just like, ah, oh, just gonna stand over here whilst you drink that. Could you... Oh, I'm feeling a bit gassy. That? Yeah, he goes to a bar and goes, I want this drink. Okay, it'll be this. And you go, no, it doesn't. And you're like, no, you, you need to pay. No, but it's mine. I've, I've claimed that. That's part of my hoard now. This whole, actually, this whole tavern is mine. And you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's this has got to like, happen, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. This, I want to do It's this very now. much like, I'd, and I'm sure uh, fans of t uh, indie RPGs know this, but Grant Howitt made a game called Jason Statham's Big Vacation, mm. which is a brilliant one for the GM, because obviously it's like, you roll dice, Evan, but every, so you have to roll a d12 and a d6, and whenever the numbers match, it just says in the rules, Jason does something unexpected. And that allows you as a DM to be like, right, fuck this. <laughs> and go off and do something crazy. And it's so much fun. I love being I love being the Statham master in that game. Anyway. <laughs> Statham master. I, ro I, love I rolled a two. Yeah, I on. rolled a two, two on this table. So okay. Clusters so cluster of shriekers of serve as a warning system in the tunnels of an adult amethyst dragon's lair. Ooh. What is a shrieker? I, yeah. I have a feeling it's got... Has it got a... I have a feeling it's got like a, a beak of some sort. It's no. like a, oh, but, oh, it's no, it's like a sort of fungal thing with. It's like a, a horrible jellyfish type thing. Whoa, it's a no human sized you. mushroom that emits a piercing scream to drive off creatures that disturb it. Oh, that's quite cool. Hmm. Intelligent raisers in the Underdark cultivate shriekers on the outskirts of their communities to discourage trespassers. Mm. Mm. I like it. I like it. Again, it's. I, Oh, again, that again just adds a little flavour to mm. it because I can imagine like, oh, we're gonna sneak in. You're like, mm, okay, <laughs> it's got a warning system, yes. and then yeah, because they're spending all that time trying to shut them up and kill them because they've only got like an armor class of five and three, thirteen hit points. But if yeah. you got loads of them, oh, I now yeah, want to make a little... minesweeper game because that has the numbers. You know the numbers. It like tells you like three, and you know there's three around you, but you don't know where. That... Do you know what I mean? Oh. That's clever. I like that, that a lot. Because it'll be a dark, dark tunnel in. Yeah. And you have to be so. I'll just literally so... load up DOS and get Minesweeper and say, "All right, get to yeah. the other end. Go on, players." All right. Wh wh yeah. You can imagine if you shared that your screen and go, "Which one do you want?" And they have to pick it. And you're like, "Are you sure?" I like because I've never won m not Minesweeper at all. But that's such a. I love that in integrating another game into. Yeah. Oh, very good. What happened oh, to yes, Minesweeper? Absolutely. That was a great game actually. In its own I'm sure. Way. I'm sure you can download or get like a. Um, I bet it's probably. It used to still version. be on like Windows. Me like Millennium Edition or whatever like maybe 2000? I don't even I don't even know if Solitaire is still on. You oh know. my gosh, jeez. Oh well, <laughs> us oldies. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. Us old, us old people. Um, finally, we've got the ancient okay. amethyst ancient dragon connection. This D4. is a D4. D4. Yeah. Because so again, you get to an adult, you're doing all the stuff, and then an ancient one, you you, you don't go you're out as much. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you're like you're, more feet you're up on the sofa this. now. Yeah. You're like, you you bought your hoard. <laughs> you bought your lair. You're not moving. Anywhere. Yeah. You're just sitting on that wealth. <laughs> you're thinking about yeah. um, getting equity release on your hoard. <laughs> 
Amazing. Are you looking to live out the rest of your days as an as an ancient dragon? Do you want to stop holding? <laughs> Release equity in your horde with Saga. Okay, okay. right. Do you want the timeshare? No. <laughs> Timeshares in the Costa del Sol for ancient, um... <laughs> for ancient Amethyst dragons. <laughs> All right, uh, it's a three. What's a three? Uh, an ancient amethyst dragon is able to awake psionic potential in others, and many of the greatest psi warriors in history were the dragon students. Ooh, I like that. I love that. Again, it comes to the idea that this is a a, a scholar, scholarly, I can't even say mm. that word, uh, an intellectual dragon who likes numbers. Mm. And it's like, oh, it's just that unlocking of the universe that's being so you can now see the numbers almost like Matrix style in yeah. the air and bend it to your will. I like it. Have They're the Oracle. Neo. Yeah. Or Mo- yes. Morpheus. <laughs> yes. There is no spoon. You know, all that sort of business. Oh, <laughs> that, oh. Already, I've, oh, there's so much here. I love that. So yeah, so now that we've you've gone, we've gone through. I'm this so whole glad you said present. there is no spoon, so I can put in that there is no spoon yes! scene because it's my favourite scene in that I, movie. Oh, there is no so spoon. Good. There is no spoon. <laughs> it's like you have to be kind. It's like slightly <laughs> potting this little kid, isn't it? It's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just sort is, of sat there and, and it drunk. is not you, the spoon that bends, but it is yourself. <laughs> Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. There is no spoon? Then you'll see that it is not the spoon that bends. It is only yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I love that scene, though. I uh, love you, it. You I have to put it. that as an NPC somewhere. Whenever, uh, you, boy. Yo, what day is it? <laughs> it is not the day that changes. It is you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the new film to come out in December. I will say I that. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I can't wait. I, it is going to be one for the cinema. I've decided. Oh, I've, yeah. I've seen Dune. It's Matrix next. That is. Mm. That is. Anyway. Okay. So we've gone through <laughs> all four stages, and actually, I think this is yeah. a very good idea to do because then now we have almost like a branching timeline of you mm. could put your dragon anywhere. Mm. But I, li- I like the idea that this ancient dragon still has this playmate and guardian of the mm. violet uh, fairy dragon. Yeah. That I can imagine it is like teaching the adventurous of me. Is Coming in. Oh, yeah. hello. Like, you're like, oh, bringing, I'm busy. bringing you crumpets and. <laughs> oh, I'm not disturbing anything, am I? Oh. <laughs> like... It's just a callback like to and a I previous love... episode. That was all. Oh, I mean, oh, yeah, crumpets. Yes. Oh, I love Sorry. crumpets. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and you've got yeah. the shriekers. I think that's great. Yeah. And then what was the other one? Oh, and the Aboleth. So we've got mm. like a friend, mm. a foe. Um, an environmental <laughs> thing and like a, a like a history, a, a, a like a, a an achievement per se. So that's yes. actually filled out quite nicely. All these sort of uh, connections. So I love okay. it. Yeah, and you, yeah, and your psi warriors as well. I kind of like the fact that you could um, that like you could even have like one of your first interactions, or as you're saying, like ways to get into like interacting with this dragon for whatever your need is. So I think what was the adventure was the the dragon wants uh, you to go collect the the stone giant from the the, the gem mm. from the stone giant. So maybe like one of the Psy warriors is your first introduction who shows Ooh. you the way through maybe like through the Sheikers if yeah. it was that sort of thing. So it's like that's how you meet them. Like you help them on an adventure and yeah. then they take you to this dragon. So there's a whole like, we're going to go see a dragon. <laughs> we're going to go meet a dragon and be friends with it. How cool is that? Yeah, well, yeah, again, like going back to that Minsk and Boo mm. Journal of Villainy. They have obviously that whole thing where you can get joined to a guild and they have two contacts. So mm. maybe one of the contacts is this other side warrior mm. and you create your own guild oh, yeah. around that if that's something that you wanted to do. If it's like, yeah. this is good to be a quest giver thing, yeah. that's fine rather than a fighting thing. Because that's what I appreciate. We've all gone that you don't have to fight dragons. And here's one way we've not fought a dragon exactly. at all because yeah. we've just made this thing. But I think that's so cool because obviously we. I love how I you're level like... 20, you, know, you have your level 5 and your level 15. Your level 15 is the, the elderly lady, the elderly, like, here's your tea and biscuits and like what your boons are as you get like bon- bonus biscuits or something. I'm sorry. I'm just... I, I am all for uh, older NPCs. Oh, no, 100%. No, I was just know, thinking, like, but like, I love what that. Your bene- like, the benefits would just be like, extra cake which would just be great like hero's oh. feast like you get hero's feast every time or something that would be awesome and, but it is like just made out of crumpets and jam that was all i just love that yeah. idea and we're back yeah we Whoa. Had a brief interlude brief interlude but a br- we're back a br- just a brief interlude but it's fine because then in the meantime it meant i got, had to go and look up what amethyst dragons do which is very important yes <laughs> for the end of this episode but yes we'll, we'll continue yeah. on then 
<laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, amazing. amazing. <laughs> so we just done the connections and stuff. And now yeah. the, in Fizzbands, it talks about dragon layers. And we'll come on to this in a, mm. a bit more detail later. But I just wanted to say, like, looking... And they must do this for every single entry. Not that I've checked. Mm. But they've drawn an example layer. Mm. And it's bloody beautiful. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just stunned by how pretty everything is in these books now. Mm. Like, like you can see that obviously they've got like a um, little grid system, but they've got obviously got it's all named stuff. But I think mm. more importantly is that you can view a player version. And I know they've done this for ages, certainly on D&D Beyond, that you mm. can have a player version. And it's just nice because then obviously when it's all online and stuff, you can just like take it down and then use it on any system or anything or send it to the players if they've got like mm. a mapped out version. And again, you can see there's the dragon scale uh, texture as well. Oh, oh, I've just realised that that is the small bit of this one. Mm -hmm. hey, that's cool. So that's like the mountain by the lake. Yeah. And that is inside the mountain by the lake. Oh, cool. Exactly. Really so yeah, there's a lot of detail in it, which is fantastic. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. So, um, and so we'll come back to it. So it obviously describes like some entrances, the main mm. caves. I think the most important thing... Uh, I think for maybe visual stuff and sort of if you're describing as they're going into the the cave, as is of, as it's shown here that amethyst dragons like being near water and stuff. So this, it does say later on that um, a a lair that is behind a cascading waterfall is perfect. And mm. I was like, oh, of course a dragon would love such a feature just to be able to like, yes. like appear out of it, which I love. But What's sort of uh, important to amethyst dragons is that they have these clusters of crystals around. And what I find was really interesting, again, reading it up a little bit later, the older the dragon are, the darker, the, the, the sort of more vibrant the purple colours are Ooh, in the nice. thing, which I love. I love yeah. that idea that, again, if it's if it's one of those things where it's a, a great rest of March or you're just campaigning years and years and it's you're having that thing where time skips and you have new characters and stuff, it's the same dragon giving out quests and stuff that the yeah. colors of the the crystals change they're sort of oh. aging with it yeah oh, like exactly mm. yeah oh cool cool so the final the final little bit is dragon treasures now we sort of mm. have alluded to the fact that uh amethyst dragons they are they're sort of psionic in some way um mm. and they their sort of dragon hordes it sort of talks about is that they collect crystals and gems particularly their own namesakes, uh, in any kind of form. But they're not interested in, like, coins, per se. So I think that's a really thing, good thing to remember, is that this whole place is sparkling. It's mm. gorgeous, you know? Yeah. You have your geodes and all that sort of thing, and anything that has, like, a silvery finish. So if you've yeah. got, like, a beautiful mirror or something like that. They also favour sort of treasures that are scholarly. scholarly. You can't even say that word. Because um, we talked about before, that this idea of, like, Gold philosophical... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Why not? Yeah, and but yeah. like having scrolls, having like woven tomes oh, of like embroidered a water cloth. Clock. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Anything that's like intricate and detailed, yeah. and this, you know, even if it's just doing the simplest of tasks, but always different ways to do it. That's what's love going it. to be in this dragon hold, which I absolutely mm. love. And it talks about art objects. I don't know mm. Hamilton how much you've rolled on loot tables or or hoard tables. That's like in the the DM's guide. Yeah. And what you think of art objects in general. What do you think? So, like, what, what do you, what do you have, make of them? Yeah, so I have okay, two things. I have not rolled on the table, but I have put art objects in a one shot. Really, mm -hmm. like, like treasure hoard. Because campaign wise, it's not really come up that much until right at the end. And the only one was like the, and then when I do, it's sort of just like you get lots of money. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But, yeah. And 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 that and you and I flavor it with some things, but I equate it to financial value. If you know what I mean, so it's like you find like loads of like f like fine jewelry as well as mm. some silver silverware and some fantastic furniture and all these bits and stuff. But that all equates to fifty thousand gold or something like that. Do you know? But yeah. the one time I really did it was when I had a. It was the one shot I talked about earlier when the guy turned into a bard was mm. the uh, the the BBG and that had like this fantastic collection in a tower that sort of like spiraled up and 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 they had to go and find a particular painting which was an actual portal to another land and I I basically used the tables in that in the sense well a table I don't know I didn't use one on DMG I just found one online actually that was mm. like a D100 table and just basically populated it and they could 
they could steal anything and it basically just had it you know if they wanted to find <laughs> a spell jammer helm if <laughs> like last week we're talking about because uh, this is the future <laughs> to what we're mm-hmm. talking about uh, or you know or um uh, a vorpal sword or anything ridiculous like you know anything of that ilk they would they would be able mm. to find it and that's how i used it and with that used the they had mm. art uh things in there which just basically had value or was a magical painting there was a couple of magical paintings in there like the one was a portal in this one mm-hmm. so. yeah I, yeah because i think with our objects there is that tendency to be like it's very pretty but what's it worth mm. what can i sell it for and that's the thing i always i always get i always i guess because obviously it's not something like you know in a video game like mm. I'm going to say it, like Animal Crossing, right? You can pay a lot of bells to get a really nice picture or whatever, and you can put it somewhere and you can see it every time you go into the hall and stuff like that. Whereas mm. I always think with art objects in loot tables and all that sort of thing, it's like, it's a great ideas and there's a way to describe it and stuff. But as soon as someone casts like um, uh, a ma- uh, uh, detect magic on it, unless you're using like, I know there's obviously we've got Dragon Horde mm. magic items and stuff like that. If it goes, oh, it's not magical. They go, right, I was going to sell that when we get to the... Mm. Well, that's market, it, isn't I'm it? Like, yeah. Unless you have, like, unless you want to do the, as you said, the Animal Crossing or the Sims sort of element to your party yeah. and say, like, you know, like, there's a good, uh, I really want to read it properly, but there's a the Keeps one, there's a there's a, a, a supplement that, was it MCTM? I can't remember who makes it. It might be, um, uh, I forgot his name, now. Um, MCDM person, what they're called. Uh uh, Matt Colville, I think, doesn't he do a keeps one oh. strongholds and something like that? And I think you can like level up yeah. your your keep and stuff. And so I would suggest oh. things like that could be go towards like making your keep more fancy. You know what I mean? So mm. making your keep more fancy makes the quality of the 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 I don't know how that helps the, the sort of maybe you can make no. better parties, which means better people come to your part. I don't know. I no, really y- just, y- you know what? That's yeah. a very interesting point. There's a um, you probably have mm. heard of it or played it, but it's like um theme hospital or two point hospital yes. or whatever it's called now oh, I love theme so hospital. they have the yeah. whole oh it's oh it's so good uh, mm. and all i know we always end up just going have you played this video game that's related to what we're talking about yeah. but in in the newest version you can you, you know you can make the rooms but you can mm. like add to it and be like um here's a plot plant etc and it levels up the room but then yeah. it means more people come to your gp surgery more your gps yeah. are more likely to stay so i think yeah. you could have a almost like a mechanic if, and this is the thing like obviously you don't have to have your any guards of are all, happier I... because they're walking around your keep seeing pretty pictures so they're generally <laughs> in a better mood therefore you get a plus one yeah. bonus to charisma saves or something like that i don't know you could it could be something along those lines yeah exactly have some sort of benefit like people are happier mm. people are going to listen to you the checks to ask say the guards or we're being attacked can you hold them off whilst we go and get something we'll be right back it might be an easier persuasion persuasion or or whatever persuasion checks exactly yeah but 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 i think yeah just i mean i appreciate like this is all like all getting really nitty-gritty but i just feel like because of these all these tables about art objects in the Mm. dm's guide and in fizz bands to be fair they're really interesting and they're like oh this is a really cool story hook yeah but as soon as as soon as uh, the players find out it's not magical (laughs) yeah (laughs) And I feel that's such a shame because obviously D and D is so beautiful, like in the, in yeah. all the art illustrations. So, yeah, so that's just the only thing off my head. That, like drawing that stuff, exactly. I love drawing that oh. stuff myself, and it's just like yeah, and it makes the setting. I really think it it comes down to having doing the what's it the the Skyrim when you make your home sort of thing as well. It's just having the keep and exactly. and making that an important feature. And mm. and we know that D and D players love getting bonuses so if you can make it have a bonus yeah all the well you know you know like that ha- that idea of like i'm sure you did this as a kid like drawing a secret base and you'd be like this is a-. you can actually map out the room so like here is the gallery of all of our our achievements and it's like oh we got that from the amethyst dragon horde as you can yeah. see it is um, a sword made out of pure crystal i don't know but like <laughs> yeah. And like write down like my my friend Sam he always does a beautiful drawings of our characters because there's always drawings of characters but not of like here is the room they're in or Here's anything the room. like that. Yeah, so. no, that's true. Okay, I like that actually. I think that we make yeah make a make an art collector yeah like a ga- as you said a gallery like a what, gallery um, or I, I, again I'm thinking of Animal, Animal Crossing and Blathers who has the big museum it's like you caught all this fish and stuff but there's also an art gallery at the back and you know <laughs> <laughs> and it's just room upon room the one it's anyway. making me think oh sorry was the <laughs> no, no, um, go for it. Bojack Horseman and um, Diane wants a bell room she calls it a bell yeah. room which is the bell from from 
uh, Beauty and the Beast. And it's just yeah. making me think of the bell room. Like you have a bell yeah. room with all your artwork in it. How cool would that be? I yeah. just love that. Because they, they always say like when you get to a certain level, they're like, okay, you now get your own, you get your keep and you get your own room. What do you put mm. in it? And and mm. I, they might not stay there, but players love decorating what their character's room will be and now yeah. i think you got to fill it all out if you if you've yeah. got like mordekainen's mansion or whatever you know yes. and you like yeah. you, no, like, you can design think it to of the ones that both sam and uh <laughs> liam made in the critical, critical role campaigns role. they mm-hmm. are just i mean fa- I, everything's ch- <laughs> everything's chicken i love i love that one and which is sam's i love the take that sam took on that compared to mm. caleb's like the yeah sorry to liam's it's and like it's, it's, and that I think yeah, just getting that back. Anyway, we've gone a Sorry. little bit off track, but I just thought I just thought that was interesting about oh, art just... objects because they're important. So, hmm. um, do you want to roll this final one then? It's a oh, D eight to see. D eight. D eight. Yeah, to there see is. like what else, what what would be a random art object we would find in our dragon's hoard. Three toi. A a life size human skull skull. Sorry, hmm. carved from a single piece of crystal including a hollow interior mm-hmm. so now uh, now i'm thinking of like that damien uh, exactly Hurst. what i was thinking damien Hurst. i've seen yeah. those in in the flesh oh, the flesh oh. well well yeah the, 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 they are incredible and yeah i've seen this i think i've seen the shark years ago as well yeah. like, again but then again it's like that's really cool mm. what are you gonna do with it? is it gonna be an expensive paperweight you're gonna put at the end of your desk or are you yeah. gonna shuff, you know shuft it off to the, the bazaar like again so I, I guess so I mean it's I mean you could give that a value easily but it's just like yeah you can't I mean that's the thing you I think the, the other thing you can do as we didn't say is you could just apply a magical effect to every single Absolutely. one if you so wished as well you could yep. say that this is a small skull of holding that you can you can put a a, a small object and it will stay there like gold you could put loads of gold coins in there and it's like a infinite coin it's like a money bank <laughs> money bank yeah exactly it's a piggy bank yes exactly it's an, it's a, yeah. yeah exactly yes there you go oh my goodness that would be yeah perfect and uh, yeah exactly I think it's just taking this if you like not want to be an art object make it into an artifact or even as we said in Fizzbands there is a section where you okay. can imprint what the dragon is depending on yeah. how old they are and stuff so and you can even give it like a quirk so like this crystal could just have like an echo of the mm. amethyst dragon sort of yeah. personality and it could be whispering oh, I, I was thinking that you. like you can put you can put a hum- you can put like a personality into it or something like that and then it's like exactly. uh, murray from uh monkey island three <laughs> yep Ab- yeah yeah absolutely it's just like hello really, like, yeah, just, it's like really <laughs> annoying a really annoying psychic that you can't get rid of but it's good oh. fun amazing and again these are these are just tiny little things that again your players might be like oh, it's a crystal we're gonna throw it as soon as it yeah. does something they're, they're like oh Ooh. and that's no and it's no in-game effect it's just you being irritating but just <laughs> now you've personalized it because that's the thing because as soon as it's like some oh, of the best things oh. are most irritating as well like oh it, yes it is well it's like um hey listen from you know zelda that yeah. whole sort of thing it's like you can't like i feel like a strong urge like we can't get rid of it even though it's probably worth quite a lot because it's it seems sentient and we'd feel bad, you know, yeah. so... Just putting it in a box. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. And of course, this could be to anything. Like, we're looking at it as well. There's, like, um, obviously lots of pale crystal stuff, but there's also, like, a ring in the shape of a coiled dragon with a tiny gemstones for eyes at number mm. eight on this table, which is like beautiful. And again, mm. I can imagine that being easily a magic item, but also just being, like, that idea of echoes and that sort of amethyst dragon telling you things, perhaps, like, cool. almost like a... Um, Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, like the One Ring, essentially. Yeah. You know, and maybe it draws, maybe it draws other amethyst dragons. Because of course, once a dragon has died, mm. the other dragons are going to know about it, and they're going to come find, you know, the hoard yeah. and who, you know, who's taken it. You know, so that yeah. I like that idea that it is any of these art items could actually Hello. be. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, hello, can I hear you? <laughs> yes, this is, this, I am the new owner of this hoard. Can you please, re- I'm sorry, g- g- please, bye, bye. Please return, please <laughs> yes. return to... Uh... Play is just like putting it in a box somewhere. Okay, we'll forget about that one. Exactly. But yeah, so, so again, it could be easily something that, uh, again, it could be something useful or it could be something really bad that puts a huge target on your back for other yeah. dragons to come and find you. So yeah. I like it. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Or when the dragon dies, its soul gets embodied into it and you have to then take it somewhere to like rebirth it or something because it becomes Ooh. an egg. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, don't... of course. Yes, because there's a whole section on um, on hatching and eggs mm. and all that sort of thing as well. That's... Yeah. Oh all good so that's us obviously creating just yeah. our our I- ideal amethyst dragon but i thought we'd just quickly end by looking at the beastery section 
of mm -hmm. dragons because I think it's important actually I, I actually quite like how we've done this is that we've rolled we've picked a dragon and then we're going to look at what that dragon can do we've already yeah. created our base skin of it and obviously that we could take that and go actually this doesn't work for an amethyst dragon this works for a green dragon or, or any yeah. of the other dragons and just put it put it there and tweak it slightly so I think it's just mm -hmm. a good a good procedure to do mm -hmm. so looking in the beastry itself uh, firstly, amethyst dragons are the mightiest of gem dragons, which I'm like, mm. yes, we win. Yes. <laughs> Good rolling on that, Hamilton. That was just, oh, excellent. I just showing the artwork here now of, that, oh, of the one that's on they there. They are gorgeous. They're just so bloody cool. I'm looking and, at an ancient one, by the way. That's oh the yeah, but the ancient ones are amazing. Um, but what I again getting the vibe off um, mm. in the beastry, it feels very Doctor Strange actually. This idea that they obviously mm. use psionic powers and they like. The fundamental, like, like manipulating the fundamentals, like the fundamentals of the multiverse, mm. uh, changing stuff like the force of gravity, and again that whole thing before about that ancient uh, dragon that we said that has psionic warriors. It trains people up. I love that. That it's it actually comes from. It's not just like oh I've read some books. It's actually mm. no. This is this is actually <laughs> this is my wheelhouse. <laughs> out of the yeah. way. Yeah, and then as it gets older as well, these dragons from they become sort of they they start off with like dull, opaque purple scales, so that's a typical sort of like your, your typical purple. <laughs> and mm. then obviously as they get older, they get more vibrant and translucent. So again, that idea of a gem being able to see through it, which I, oh, I just love that idea that again describing dragons and describing their environment, I think is so important for this to just to emphasize how bloody cool they are. They are really cool. I'm uh, reading all this as well, like. I skim read this when we first read the Fizzbands bit in the Beastry bit because I was like, dragons, I know dragons, I'm sort of, I want to read all the like new bits, but then all this stuff is like, yeah, I'm like, this is all good stuff. This is all very good stuff. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. I quite like, there's in the section, uh, co uh, cosmological study, mm. they take, you know, they pay, you know, they are aware of intrusions, you know, from the far realm into the mm. material plane, but it says at the end, they are strangely intrigued and fond of flumps. Now, I I I know what a flump is. Here's a flump. Hamilton, do you? <laughs> it's just like the silliest creatures. They yeah. remind me of um, if you've ever watched uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, and the the card he always draws with the little furry creature that is like, oh no, not this creature, <laughs> useless. And then of course it's like, oh, there's loads of them, and we're gonna take down that blue eyes white dragon. <laughs> that's what that's what it sounds like here. That these yeah. flumps sort of oppose bloody mind flies, <laughs> and then, and then they're just yeah. like. At the end of it, Amethyst Dragon, they are sort of reminded that allies can be found in the strangest of places. And I'm like, the so flumps. <laughs> the flumps. Well, I mean, it's quite... I kind of like it. I kind of like the... Yeah. Um, I just quite like the idea, as you said, of this like mighty dragon floating with all these like, oh, hello. 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 Oh, hello. <laughs> And just Ooh. flying off like, where are you off to? Kill some elephants! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'd, well, the, and there you go, another character is like, oh, wait, sorry, my messengers are coming in. It's all these flumps going, oh, blah, blah, blah. he goes, yeah. good work. Oh, blah, blah. And you're like, what the fuck was that? Oh, don't <laughs> exactly. worry. They've stopped a huge incursion on, <laughs> on the far realm. What? <laughs> they dealt, the flumps dealt with it. Who have you got on it? Top flumps. <laughs> Top <Yeah>. flumps. <laughs> Well, that's a top trumps game. I never knew I needed, but there you go. Oh my god! Yes, top flumps. Yes. But again, it, I've it's, got it's mega flump. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the ultimate flump, mega flump, right? We can't, we can't, can't compete with that. Oh, my. Ooh, what the, I just can imagine them all coming together. <laughs> it's yeah, into one sort of megazord flump. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I'm, we're gonna have to do a whole episode on flumps now. We need to yes, really so. delve I feel, in. All, I feel all, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Mega but flumps think, and mind flayers. <laughs> Next episode. Oh, well, that's a spin-off series in itself. <laughs> <laughs> One is a flump. The neighbour is a mind flayer. Oh, they don't get on. <laughs> <laughs> the back-to-back -back picture. Oh, sort of angry folks. <laughs> I'll get you a flumps. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, I love it. Fantastic. I love flumps. Oh, they uh, again. I think it goes back to that whole when we talked about uh, that wormling we created, the wormling mm. um, 
Amethyst Dragon that we rolled, oh, it has a fairy dragon as its partner. Mm. And again, because it's the way that Amethyst Dragon is portrayed, I love the idea that it is very serious or very sort of poker face. And then you have all these creatures around it and it's like, you know, the creatures are like, oh, hello, blah, blah. And he goes, <laughs> you did well. Good. A very Witcher-esque yeah, not... in a way. Like, yes. Mm, yes. Good. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's great. I, I really like that. That is perfect. It's sort of that co- counter that counterpoint between the two, sort of like playing off each other would be so. Yes, mm-hmm. no. I'm makes it makes it. it more interesting. Yeah. I want them to be carrying the tea though with the the elderly fairy dragon as well. Though they're all like Ooh. moving the little cups and pouring them out for you and stuff like floating around. Oh. Here you go. One oh, becomes a hot. table. <laughs> oh yes. Ooh. Don't mind me. <laughs> We've done it now. We've, 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 this is now official uh, Flump podcast. We've done yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> moving on slightly yeah. <laughs> to um, uh, dragon lairs. So mm. amethyst dragons, as we sort of discussed briefly, they mm. sort of make their uh, lairs in caves and mm. under secluded pools and lakes, preferring caverns with at least one entrance submerged with water. And I quite like this, that they, they, there is a lot of water in it. So again, if your players are coming in, the amethyst dragon could be underneath the water. It could be difficult yeah. to rain, or it could be above, and it doesn't matter where. Yeah. So it makes it a little bit difficult for the players. It's not all solid ground. Like environment is a killer for players. I I struggle with environment as a player, so it is yeah. your friend as a DM. But the lair actions. I don't know if you had a chance to have a look yeah. at this Hamilton. Well, they it made really me remind cool. myself of what I said earlier. <laughs> yeah. Force exactly. Cage. <laughs> yes. Bastard. <Impre- laughs> But this time, the DM has it. So yes, they ha- exactly. On an initiative of 20, uh, Lairs get uh, an action, essentially. So it's just an additional thing your dragons can do. So looking this at it... This is going to be my long play, get back on that player. If you I are so. watching, the- <laughs> If you're watching this, Anita from Critical Misses, <gasps> I'm coming to get you because I'm going to force cage you. <laughs> and then, you're, and then you're, you're Amethyst Dragon and it's been so just calm, and, calm and cool. And it's like, yeah, now who's in the cage? <laughs> who's in the cage now? Yeah. Boom. They won't even remember. <laughs> they won't even remember. But I'll be like, they're like, what? What is going on? Exactly. So this lair action is called imprisoning force. So the dragon casts force cage spell and uses its spell to save DC. And the spell ends only if the if the dragon uses this lair action again or dies. So mm. here's the thing. You so there's three lair actions. You could do this at the beginning of your thing and then never use it again trapping who's ever in that force cage to be yeah. out of the fight they're essentially. quite big force cages as well so you might even be able to trap all of them <laughs> and exactly. just be like and do what i did force cage yeah well yeah because that's the thing when you when unless again i'm very bad as a player i we always clump together so as soon as you go oh he's gonna do your fire quick we need to spread out unless they're gonna do that straight away because yeah initiative yeah. 20 count this is when the lair action is unless they're gonna have really high uh, mm. initiative which they may do because uh, this dragon yeah. is a certainly the ancient dragon is a level mm. 23 critical rating a challenge rating sorry so yeah the force cage what a great start um, you also have the mm. guiding whisper which the yeah. dragon telepathically whispers to a creature within range and they must succeed mm. on a wisdom saving throw or be charmed by the dragon until the next uh, round yeah which is great i i love a love a good charm effect um again mm. a gem dragons yeah. it says are typically neutral so it won't it, it might be more like um i would say it, i mean it could be backstab your your friends or something like that but it might just be like take a swim in the lake or something like that and so they might just be like away from the party unable to do anything um or just arrange yourselves in a line neatly if you would <laughs> <laughs> could you stand up behind this person <laughs> Absolutely. And then finally, there is spatial proje- projection. Yeah, I like this. So bloody cool. So essentially, the dragon chooses a space it could fit in, it can fit in within to in its lair. Those are words that are not in the right order. But essentially, it can exist in its own space and another chosen space simultaneously. And it mm. can choose which version of itself it would like to move. Mm. That's pretty cool. Like, yeah, I, yeah and if an attack yeah. or a, an effect target at both the That's spaces at the really... same time work yeah. well for your if you're doing breath weapons and stuff you know tactically being able to position yourself like like they're all like standing in this line and you're yeah. like this and then you go well i'm now here Zoop. <laughs> cut <laughs> cut the line you know all that sort of so within like a mile or so of the of the the lair itself mm. there'll be certain effects to be like hey guys this 
there's a big band over here. <laughs> Just want to signpost this out to you. But they're, they're really cool ones. So that here you've got um, thriving wildlife. So fish and other aquatic beasts reproduce rapidly and thrive in bodies of water within six miles of the lair. So... And which is a benefit because obviously you can think villages and stuff are going to mm. be like, oh shit, there's loads of food now. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't sunk. matter. We're giving it all our gems. We're getting great. Food. We're getting all this food. Well, exactly. And you can imagine actually again another storyline where you like the villagers is like, oh, we're doing well. It's very plentiful harvest this year. Um, but there's no. But and any and then maybe somebody steals one of the adventurous pouches that have gemstones in it or something like that. And they're like, you know. We don't talk about the mountain. Don't go up the mountain. Yeah. Don't disturb what's ever up there. You know, everyone's and then if they do, happy. oh yeah, everyone's too happy. And then you go and disturb. Be like, what did you do? And he's like, well, we defeated the dragon. And you're like, you idiots. <laughs> we were fine. <laughs> um, I like that. That's right. There's a witch. As I said, there was a Witcher thing which is very similar to that. A couple, I, there's a yes. billion things in the Witcher game, but yeah, there's one that's very similar with a. Benefits. Yeah, it was a hag and, one. They're getting benefits from the hag. Oh, that was really, it. Yeah, the yeah. hag. Yeah, exactly. Um, and there's other stuff like watery sight, so yeah. they this they can use clairvoyance uh, and target any mm. body of water in that region. They've also got crystal protru- protrusion. Oh, profusion. I can't even say Fusion. words now. Profusion. Which is just like there are just loads of crystals and geodes. So again, like almost like I can imagine like a yellow brick road type thing, oh. or am- am- yeah. And it's like oh, it's so sparkly. So yeah. road. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> So yeah, yeah so it's, you can feel it. You can see like a really, I can see like in a video game esque when it lands and it makes its layer. It does this and like settles and it just goes. And these things just start like growing out of everywhere and exactly. it starts settling the land into it. Oh, oh cool. be so cool! Yeah, yes. and I thought we just end by looking mm. at the ancient yeah. um, amethyst dragon because, if in doubt, let's go ancient. Um, yeah. Oh, so Only good. Four hundred forty-four hit points. No, no, no big deal. No big deal. It's got a flight speed uh, of of eighty feet. Uh, yeah. It can swim. It mm. can obviously nor- n- move normally. Mm. Skills, obviously. I love that Arcana is plus twenty two. It's gonna know what things it's are. <laughs> it's like that's a magic item. I know it. Um, which is I love. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's resistant to uh, force and psychic. And big ones, big ones. And conditions immunity. I always think this is interesting. So it's frightened and prone, but it could technically be grappled, even though it's a gargantuan creature. So well, I guess I guess if it's I another mean, gargantuan creature, I mean it's exactly. going to be a strength plus eight, but which is yeah, it's pretty strong. So it's yeah. So I think that's the thing is that most dragons, from my, what I'm aware of, they have a lot of uh, condition immunity. Certainly the mechanic. Mm. Oh my god. The metallics and the chromatics, from what I remember. So do make well, a note of that. Let's have a look at the aspect of Tiamat quickly. Condition yes, immunity do, is blinded, please. charmed, deaf, and frightened, poisoned, and stunned. For example. Yeah. So that that's a. Bahamut okay. is the same, basically, nearly. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I guess because they they are sort of a higher up, maybe as a deities mm. and stuff. So, it, but yeah, I think it's again not that your players will know this. I think, but I think as a DM, it's good to. To mm. just be aware that oh, I'm going to cast darkness or something like that, so you can't see. It's like mm, mm. it won't work. It won't work on Tiamat or or, or, or aspects yeah. of Tiamat. But uh, on this one, it probably will. Except it's got dark vision. I this and is the barbarian. I'm going to grapple the dragon. Okay. And you're like, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> you, you can try. You actually definitely can try <laughs> this time. You can definitely try. Yeah. Um. Obviously, legendary resistances always good. Yeah. To, again, I like I said before, put it at the top so you don't forget. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to talk about very quickly the singularity breath because what what a name, fantastic, and just the way it describes it. So the dragon creates a shiny bead of gravitational force in its mouth and then releases the energy in a ninety foot cone. Each creature in that area must make a DC twenty three strength saving throw, and on a fail, it takes sixty three or 40, 14 d eight force damage, and its speed becomes zero to the start of the dragon's next turn. So what an opener! Mm. Uh, you you know you blast this again if they're all <laughs> they're all very mm. nicely put together all on the line. You maybe you do that and then maybe uh, if the dragon rolls really high, and initiative does that and then force cage. That's it. You're kind of stuck. You're all you're all not moving anywhere or you're not mm. getting anywhere. And yeah, force damage is very hard to. Uh, I don't not that I'm, I'm not aware of anything that players can do unless it's magical that would half force damage. And there's nothing mm. like resistance per se which uh is amazing uh, i guess unless you are an actual draconic uh yeah. gem dra- dragon born yeah. which is new 
but yeah i just again what a name singularity okay. breath oh, fantastic i love it i love it all i love it all yeah absolutely so cool uh, the mm-hmm. other ones, I mean, spellcasting is in the new type of spellcasting, which is cool, which is this just mm-hmm. simplified one day each. Here's a bunch of spells. Love it. Yep. Absolutely love, love it. it. Great ones. I mean, yep. clearly, like, on the, on point, you know, blink, control water, dispel magic, freedom of movement, global boundary, plane shift, protection from evil and good, and sending. So yeah. very much psionic water mm. and planar, sort of basically, yeah. isn't it? They sort of stick with that sort Pretty of... Pretty much, yeah. And Globe of Invulnerability is great as well. I don't know if you looked mm. at that. It's Yeah, it's basically there's just an mm. anti-magic barrier below a certain number of spells. Mm. So fifth level and below can't yeah. do anything. And even if you like, I'm going to use, I don't know, Fireball at eighth level, it's still not going to get through. So I like the fact that you could put that up you know, you go, okay, well, I'm going to use my eighth level spell of, mm. of something. And you go, cool, I'm going to resist against it anyway with my legendary resistance. So you, I just love that. Like, you get to yeah. a point where you, you're just wasting people's just spells. Wasting. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to, like, you have to come to me and fight me as, as mm. a melee or rangement, but then I'm going to fly <laughs> as well. Mm. <laughs> Which, ah, I love. And of course, yep, yeah, they can change shape. Uh, into a, a creature that is medium or small, which is great. Again, you can have these in disguise, like we said before about this. Yeah. I want a knight out on the town, as like the Baron S type. Uh, what we do in the shadows, um, <laughs> so good. Which I love, and I think the final thing I want to say is obviously legendary actions. Yeah. Um, these are great. Again, would write them at the top of your sheet so that you remember to do them because they are. Oh, it's so much fun to use mm-hmm. them. Um, but I love explo- explosive crystal. So the dragon spits out an amethyst that explodes at a point that it can see within 60 feet. Um, so just like basically just a missile of mm. pure amethyst. It's like a frag grenade. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if, yeah. 18 force damage or 4d8 and can be knocked prone if they don't succeed a dexterity saving throw. So and that's that's what that that's a uh, free legendary action. So you can only do it once per huge round. But again, mm. that would be so cool. Again, at the beginning that's of your turn, if you're just like, bad, I'm just going to. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Oh, it's great. Brilliant. No, they're really cool, actually. I think they're my new favourite dragon at the moment, <laughs> just because I really like all they have on there, really. Like, I love the all the stuff we were talking about with their layers as mm. well and the other additional actions, the layer actions they get, which are really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think, and yeah, as you said, Singularity Breath is just the best name for a breath weapon, I think, ever. So, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, and yeah. you know what? I hadn't I hadn't clocked as you said like the new spell casting in that is just once yeah. per day. Oh, so much Sorry. easier. Yeah. I I I feel so much better now that I've seen that. I actually because yeah. I was like I hadn't even clocked it. That's how yeah. small a change it is really. But as an admin person, I'm like, hooray! Yeah. <laughs> Throw no, just, away all those markers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just that's it. <laughs> no, really. Uh, uh, well, it's it's one of those things when you think oh, it makes so much sense, but it probably took a lot of thinking to get to it. Do you know what I mean? Like. I think a lot of playtesting as well. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and that's the thing with all with all these books and stuff. I know, I guess when, when we, not even criticise them, when we go through them as a player, let's face it, we're still amazed that someone's written a book. Uh, yes, like, exactly. I'm like, I'm so ex- And that's the thing, I always come away from these things not being disappointed, which I think sometimes people do. They're like, oh, it didn't have this or it didn't have this. I come away with so many ideas and I'm, so I'm like, already, I'm so, like, yeah. I know you're excited about Dragons anyway, but I'm like, oh, this is really yeah. cool. I, I guess yeah. for me, I just want to run more encounters and stuff and just try this out. Like I've said before on this podcast, like I really struggle with combat and initiative because I always forget, oh, what can my dragon do or what can I do, you know, here yeah. as as a DM. So like just maybe just even running encounters and just practicing that uh, you, with you friends, know, you know. Yeah, no, it's probably, it's like Monster of the Weeking or something like that, just doing some yeah. of those as well. But yeah, just running some, I mean, like, I even think it'd be fun just to test this out because I was thinking that, you know, it's thinking back to Beelzebub or something like that, like pitting <laughs> Beelzebub versus this ancient amethyst dragon, both sort of CR23, CR25s, and just sort of see how that would manage as well, just to try and benefit yourself from like, yeah. you could just play that yourself in some respects, but because like, they're very different in their own ways and seeing how that that kind of affects play. Yeah, you know. like like almost, like, yeah, because I always thought that would be cool as like, t- say two DMs, you pick a... Uh, some level CR creatures, like six mm. of them, and you just like have a Pokemon battle of some sort yeah. against each other, or even just, just a battle like, royale, like you're saying, like between two yeah. like legendary creatures and see, yeah. like, like a like giant the team, versus though. a dragon. I like the tag team thing, like is it like you you run them out until you run out of of legendary and like uh, monsters to fight. 
Coming to Dragon's mm. Jewel, <laughs> season four, scene. <laughs> uh, sold. <Yeah. laughs> that's that's done. Okay, co-created. Yeah. TM, 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 <laughs> TM. <laughs> done, right? That's it. We've done. I think that's it. how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, there okay. you go. So that's how to make a dragon using fizz bands. Obviously, yeah. you know, this is one way of doing it. You might go the opposite opposite way around and go, I want this kind of dragon we and take the stats it first. How to make a dragon. Oh, we screwed up, didn't we? <laughs> we really did. <laughs> I'm going to cross it out. Yeah, yeah. How to make a dragon. <laughs> how to make a dragon. Yeah. Oh. And how to train your dragon is is next week. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but oh, Exactly. Amazing. So what about yourself? What about myself? Well, when I'm not recording from uh, my new closet in America, um, I am. Uh, my name is Fiona. I run the What Am I Rolling podcast, which is a twice monthly RPG one shot podcast. As always, it's going very well. Um, we have, uh, yeah, now would have been released some episodes of 39 Dark, which is a sci-fi political thriller, which is all very dark and gloomy and sort of um, a bit down. If you're, if you're not into politics just now, which I wouldn't blame you, um, <laughs> don't listen to it. But otherwise, listen to it. It's actually really fun. I've ne- I you know, it it's, one of, oh, it, it's one of those games where it's just, it's just two players and it's about how this one person tries to make change as the leader of a protest movement and, but also has to cope with their own self-worth in all the stuff happening. And, you know, it's all a bit but political backstabbing wow. stuff like that. Jeez. Really fun. It's it feels a lot too of mechanics. Real, <laughs> to be honest, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it feels very real. It. Yeah. Lots of mechanics that I've just had to do the voiceovers for and, oh, there's loads of them. But... We had such a good time doing the story. So if you're not, I would listen to it as a as just it a with? story. Did you do it? Uh, with? It's with my, I did it with my friend David, who's on a. It's called Who Lives, Who Dies. He's on that new D and D show, which I'll put the link in here. Mm. Um, and he's very good, and he's one of the players on Xerios. We used to when we used to do that. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, and so that's out. Uh, I'm currently I will be recording loads of solo one shots because I'm currently on holiday, uh, but I'm six times <laughs> six time zones away. So I've got, when everyone's finished in the after, uh, in when people are finished in the evening, I still have a bit of the afternoon. So I'll just go, well, I'll go create my own content by myself. <laughs> that's what <laughs> so, that's spare time equal content. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I'll be doing that, and I'm sure I'll be around in general. And yeah, yeah. it's almost Christmas. It's almost the festive mm. season. So and maybe presumably... we'll have a big fat quiz of the year in the new year. That's another thing, isn't oh, it? Oh, oh yes, oh yes. Oh, well, well, I hey, we'll 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 brainstorm more. Que- I can I can do questions this week because I'm yeah. I'm there we go. Let's do it. Yeah, there you go. The Let's do it. Let's make a pub quiz. Let's do it. There you go. Done. Awesome. Done. Done. There you go. Create content. <laughs> I content, am robot. Content. I make content. <laughs> so Hashtag everything is content. Yes, zero, it's, zero, well, zero. Yes, okay. Yeah, it's well, it's true. At this point, yeah. it's true. Well, thank you everyone for watching, and hopefully, you now can create your own dragons. We will see you next time, where we will. Uh, Are you I don't doing think what I said a second ago and doing. Yes. Like, we will see you in five seconds time. We'll see you in five seconds time. Whatever. Love yeah. you. Bye. Catch you on the flip. Bye. Catch you on the flip. Bye. <laughs>